Hey guys, I'm Randy Younger, and this is another episode of Unger the Radar, where we talk all things film, and we have a jam-packed episode for you tonight. Uh, we have a wonderful panel of guest critics. Uh, we've got my two of my favorite power couples. Uh, we've got ladies first, Rachel Cole. Welcome, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, happy to be here. Happy to be back and uh, excited to talk about the movies tonight. Definitely, definitely. And Miss Jen Covey, welcome back, Jen. Hi. <laughs> and for the gentleman, we have uh, Mr. Eric Godfrey. Welcome back. Hi. I'm waving at you through a Zoom window. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. And lastly, Mr. Rob Harris. Hey, Rob. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, guys, um, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. And I'm really glad that you uh, are taking the time right now. So, this is amazing um yeah so basically let's get into uh weekly watches what are we watching this week uh eric well ted lasso every week all weeks all times ted lasso every day mm -hmm. um but other than that um i really loved that uh star wars visions that just came out on uh disney plus yeah. that's animated right yeah, it's the it's the anime shorts of all different like little star wars mini shorts that they did for it and it's really good i was surprised by how good it is um does it tie in with the clone wars at all it's just it's pretty much what they did was they went to a bunch of anime directors in japan and just said do whatever you want cool so if they there's some real crazy imagery they came up with all right yeah that's on my list of, of things to see and i still have to finish up the mandalorian i know i know what you guys are thinking but yeah um i'm gonna add visions to the list as well so that's awesome uh rachel what are you watching so one of the difficult things about uh being married to someone that loves movies and tv as much as eric does uh sometimes our schedules don't match up and so i end up watching stuff without him and mm -hmm. i'm struggling to find things that i'm very interested in but i know that he won't be interested in so uh mm -hmm. the two things that i've been really watching this week are the circle on netflix um, Actually, not to interrupt you, but my very good friend from high school is on that show. <gasps> Who is it? Matt. Papadia. Oh my gosh, that's so cool! <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, but I like obviously I talk to him and I keep seeing all the updates, <laughs> and it's really funny to me because people are like tweeting him out, and I'm like, this is weird because I knew him when he was like 16. So, <laughs> well, I think from next Long week Island. is the finale. So, yeah, I'm gonna wait till it's all over, and then I'm just gonna watch all of them. So. <laughs> oh, awesome! The and circle. Okay. Yeah, the circle. Uh, basically, it's a uh, competition show involving social media. Um, mm -hmm. All of the contestants are put in basically hotel rooms or mm -hmm. like like one bedroom apartments, and they just have to communicate with the other people in the game via social media, and they have to vote on who their their like favorite people are, and those people are like designated as influencers, and the influencers get to pick who gets eliminated. And mm. at the at the end of it, I think it's a hundred thousand dollars. I mm. believe is the prize. Yeah. Um, and there's all sorts of twists and turns. There's people that are catfishing, people that are posting mm. up pictures or playing as personas that aren't actually them. Um, but the more exciting thing that I've been watching this week um, has been a the morning show on Apple oh. TV, which oh. I had like I had held off on watching for a long time because I hadn't heard the best of things about it. Um, but having watched the entire first season, um, I think that while it has a slow start to it and maybe some pacing issues uh, up front, I really like what the show developed into. Um, and I'm excited that season two has just now started. And that's a behind the scenes look at a, at a morning talk show, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, basically, they're trying to draw a lot of parallels between this and Matt Lauer. Um, but hmm. of course, the big question that hangs over the basically the first half of the season is what did he even do? And that several people keep saying, well, he isn't really Matt Lauer because what he did wasn't serious. And what he did was, you know, they're make they're blowing out of proportion. Um, but then you get to see what actually happened and it very much changes the whole dynamic of the show. So. Cool. That's, and that's on Apple TV plus, right? 
Yep. And <laughs> Billy Crudup is the one reason, like, even if, even if you're starting out the show and it's not really your cup of tea, stick it with it just for him. He is so good in the show. Oh, he's a great actor. Yeah. Um, I loved him in Big Fish, actually. <laughs> and of course, Almost Famous and um, the list goes on. Yeah. Um, Jen, what are you watching these days? Um, so Ron and I watch mostly everything together. Um, I have to say right now, the most like the show I'm most obsessed with is Only Murders in the Building, which we just watched the newest episode like an hour ago. <laughs> um, I've always been a huge Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez fan. I'm a big fan of all three of those. And to see them all together is really cool. Hmm. They also film in the building next to one of my best friends building in Manhattan. So that's kind of funny for me to see because I'll see them walking down the street. And I'm like, oh, there's her building, you know? So I feel like I've been there before. Um, and then we also watch Glow Up, which is in uh, season three now. If anybody's ever seen that, it's a Netflix show. It's also a reality show, like Rachel was talking about The Circle, but it's really cool because it, it's um, makeup artists. It's mm -hmm. a competition show of makeup artists, but it's crazy the things that people do. I, I get a glimpse of it in the real world working in entertainment. I'm not as good as those people by you know, any search of the word, but I've worked with people who are. And it's just really cool to see how much like art they can make out of just makeup. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the one where they do like like Hollywood uh, productions and stuff like that? Yeah, they did. Um, they've done like Broadway. They did some TV show. They also do like red carpet. And then on other episodes, they just do basic things like bridal looks or advertisements. It's, it's all different every single week. But it's really cool way to look into the art. Cool. All mm -hmm. right. Good to know. Good to know. I, I love how you're you're connected, by the way, with all these uh, people that are involved with these shows. It's, it's, it's <laughs> well, I only know fun. I only know the guy from the circle uh, way before this. This is when we were in high school. I haven't mm -hmm. seen him in years, but um, I just like the glow up because it's kind of like what I you know in my world. But I don't know any of those people. They're British. <laughs> I don't know them. <laughs> you, you don't know but them they're yet. very talented. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You don't know them yet. You'll meet them eventually. I, I have, I'm sure. I hope so. Some of them are great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and Mr. Harris, uh, I haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you, man. Um, what are you watching these days? <laughs> I actually saw City Slickers for the first time. Uh, I watched it with my grandfather, and that was really, really refreshing. Um, oh, man. Just like such great like comedy and everything like that. You know, so many familiar faces. It was a really good time. I think that's that's probably the perfect movie to watch with your grandfather. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't think of a better movie. Yeah, we were just um, crying, laughing like the whole time. Was this your first time seeing it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, like, I mean, I I actually like saw it in um, one of like Weird Al's music videos, and like the opening credit song is done by Weird Al. Um, so <laughs> anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was super super cool to see that. Um, and it's also, great. one thing that was really noteworthy, uh, I saw on uh, HBO uh, Max was uh, Dark Light, uh, and the subtitle is The Art of Blind Photographers. It came out in two thousand nine. It's only half an hour, hmm. but um, extremely interesting uh, and uh, eye opening. No pun intended. <laughs> um, but you know that's that's definitely worth seeing. Um, so yeah. Cool. Dark light. I'm, I'm definitely going to add that to the list as well. Yeah. The list keeps growing. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, um, I, and I could talk about City Slickers for well over an hour. So we'll probably <laughs> save, save, we'll save that discussion for another time, I think. Um, all right, guys. And as for me, um, in preparation for next week's episode of Under the Radar, um, I am trying to watch as much Sopranos as possible because uh, I'm, you know, a couple years late to the game, maybe a few decades late to the game. Um, I'm, I'm only on like the, maybe the third or fourth episode and it's really good. Uh, I love uh, James Gandolfini, the late, great James Gandolfini. Uh, the rest of the cast is fantastic. Um, it's just a wonderful, uh, it's not just about the mob. It, it's, it's really about family and friendship and, you know, dedication and just, you know, um, yeah, it's just very well acted. And I'm very interested uh, to see what they're going to do with the movie, uh, The Many Saints of Newark. 
and uh, yeah, I'm I am, and I'm a little relieved that it's a prequel because I don't have to watch everything, um, so I could just kind of start fresh with the movie. So that'll be next week. Um, so stay tuned for that. And also, I've been watching a lot of Mad About You uh, when I get home and you know from work and and decompress. It's a lovely uh, NBC sitcom from the '90s, and um, yeah, I, I love uh, Paul Reiser. He's you know a neurotic New Yorker like me, and I kind of relate to him. So it's uh, it's a fun watch, and I've got like ten seasons left of it, so I, I'm I'm good. I'm covered. But um, yeah, uh, visions and you know the circle and glow up and. Um, all the stuff you guys mentioned, that all sounds great. I just wish there was more time in the world to, uh, to get to everything. But, uh, you know, we, we do the best we can here at Under the Radar. But, um, yeah, guys, so I'm, I'm really happy to, to hear what you, what you guys are watching these days. So that's cool. All right, guys. So let's get into our first film review of the evening. Uh, we've got Dear Evan Hansen, the film adaptation of the a uh, great uh, Broadway musical starring Ben Platt as an anxious, uh, nerdy teenager. Even though he's 27 now, uh, he, he was much younger when this show uh, came out. And basically he, as a therapeutic exercise, he writes a letter to himself, uh, but this letter is actually found by uh, the parents of a teenager who commits suicide. So they think that Evan Hansen is this uh, boy's friend and basically Evan Hansen goes along with it. Uh, he basically lies to everybody involved, the family, uh, his friends, his family. And uh, it's just, a, it's a kind of a strange story, but it works. Uh, the music is fantastic. I love the songs. I really wish I saw this live on stage. I thought it would have, would have thought it would have been amazing to see. So, uh, and I have some, some it's theater. It's still on people. Broadway. It is? Okay. It's going to be real. It's not yeah. in anymore, but yeah. it's still on. Oh, it's real. Oh, it's still on. Okay. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Good to know. So I will probably check this out in the future. Um, but I do have two uh, theater people here with me tonight. <laughs> this is awesome. And I want to <laughs> just get your reactions, uh, specifically how it transferred over from stage to film. And it, was that transfer successful? um Rachel kick it off <laughs> oh goodness um <laughs> so full disclosure I have not seen the full show on Broadway I've seen clips of it uh I generally know things about certain staging of of parts of it and I know about some of the changes from the stage to the screen um I think the biggest bummer for me with this movie there's and I'm much more positive about it than I think most people in the theater community have been. Mm. Um, it kind of makes me sad that a lot of the story involving uh, Evan's mom and also mm -hmm. involving the parents w was very much kind of cut out. Um, mm. uh, there, in, in particular, there's a song with uh, the stepfather, uh, Connor's stepfather, and he sings about the fact that um, the notion of breaking in a glove and the time and the care that it takes and kind of that being um, like a metaphor for a relationship and for building a relationship and for, um, and of course the fact that he's not gonna have that time with his son now at this point. So um, it, it, it really made me sad and I don't know why they cut it necessarily it, because they literally have the scene in the movie where, where it could have happened. They just changed it to dialogue and I don't know if maybe they tried it out and it just was an awkward transition from speaking mm -hmm. to singing, but mm -hmm. I feel like they did a similar thing in a, a different scene with uh, Evan and Zoe and I, I don't know why they couldn't have done it there with with the stepfather. Mm. Um, overall, I, I didn't have the issues that a lot of people are having with the age casting, especially because a lot of the other teenage teenagers in the movie are also like actors in their twenties. So mm. I'm like, well, you know, you can, you can brag on Ben Platt for being, you know, in his late twenties, but I mean, his co-star is what, three years younger than him. Mm. Um, it's not really that like that, that much of a difference yeah so, he, he still has that youthful uh quality about him so it's not that big of a deal 
But um, I think that's, the, that's what people are most angry about is that his, his age, it's, and it's, it's a silly thing. Um, but, um, you know, I, speaking of the cast, I, I just wanna, you know, note Amy Adams, fantastic. I think she was my favorite part of this movie was her performance. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was just so genuine. And I, I actually believe that, that she was this character. And I really thought she was great. And she added a lot to the, the, to the production. Um, same with Julianne Moore. Um, there wasn't much of Julianne Moore, yeah. but it's okay. It was really all about Evan Hansen. Yeah, I think honestly the standout for me aside from Ben Platt would probably be Caitlin Deaver. I think she mm -hmm. was in fact even better. Um, yeah. I, there were a lot of little moments and, and characterizations that very much hit home for me because um, personal aside, um, I did have a friend that, uh, that committed suicide when I was in high school. Um, and there was, and when I went to the funeral service, there was a lot of feeling around the family that they were sad. They were incredibly, like they were heartbroken. They were, but they were also not surprised mm -hmm. because this was also someone that had been ha struggling for a long time and had attempted before. And I think that the way that she portrays Zoe and the attitude that she has about Connor and his death, I think is, is something that's very realistic and doesn't get shown a lot in these stories. Right. Um, and obviously this is very heavy material, but the film doesn't like, you know, make it, you know, uh, make a note of it, like that mm -hmm. it's what's going on. It, it's, it does it kind of like an easy going, easy to digest manner. It's not like melodramatic is what I'm saying. And uh, I'm really glad that they went that route because this could have gone a lot darker and a lot more somber. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, what, what did you think of the film? So I'm kind of biased because well, I still haven't seen the show, but uh, I fell in love with the soundtrack a long time ago when it was still when when it opened with Platt on Broadway. And I, I kind of had a moment where I'm like, well, I'm never going to get to see this. So I might as well just listen to the soundtrack and kind of hmm. get everything I can. So I was already predisposed to really enjoy the movie, despite I, I agree with Rachel, like the, my biggest qualms are the things that were cut, the like the things that were noticeably gone was the stuff that I'm like, I wish they could have figured out a way to put it in there. But that's the problem of when you do the adaptation of it into a movie rather than say like Hamilton, where you just film the performance. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm a big fan of the show. Um, I've, I, the soundtrack was great. And, and that's why the plat thing didn't bother me because I kind of feel bad for the filmmakers because they were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. It was like, you're going to make a Dear Evan Hansen movie. And everyone knows that this is kind of Ben Platt's baby when it was on Broadway. And for the people who couldn't see it, they, they probably, this is their only chance to see Ben Platt perform Dear Evan Hansen. And so it's kind of like, well, yeah, he's older, but this is kind of what people are going to want to see from this. So it's kind of like, so, and so it didn't bother me. It, it really didn't bother me that he was, you know, and I could, I could get into it. And uh, like, and so I enjoyed it because I'm a big fan of the music. I think they did overall a really good job with the adaptation. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, I'm definitely a fan of this movie as much as I am the musical. Yeah, same here. And I, like I said before, I definitely want to see this live. I think that'll be amazing. <laughs> um, I also wanted to mention um, the director, uh, Stephen Chbosky. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, he did The Perks of Being a Wallflower and Wonder. Uh, Rachel pointed this out to me. And I actually went uh, and, and saw both of these films um, on um, Amazon Prime, actually. Uh, fantastic. Both of them are really outstanding movies. Uh, I dare say better than Dear Evan Hansen, um, especially Parks of Being a Wallflower. I think that's pretty almost perfect to uh, close to being perfect of a movie. Um, it was just so well acted. And all three, uh, this, Wallflower and Wonder, they all deal with alienated, you know, socially awkward young people and how they kind of navigate through that, that, you know, that, you know, road and how they're, um, they're just misunderstood. I Did you read Perks of Being a Wallflower? 
I did not. I think yeah, Chabosky... it's, it's interesting that you said that he's the same director. I didn't know that. I I read Perks yeah. of Being a Wallflower and I saw the movie at, yeah. in the theater. And then obviously I've seen Fear of Enhanced on Broadway and I saw it in the movies. Um, that also took out a lot of um, family and parents aspect of the book. Not saying the movie isn't great, but it was adapted very differently than the book. Interesting. It's interesting because he kind of interesting also. that that's what's happening here too. So I wonder if that's just like this director's mo, just focus on the teenagers. So he likes to omit stuff from the source material. That's very interesting. Well, yeah. uh, again with with Perks, the uh, weird thing is he wrote the book, so it was his mm -hmm. baby. He wrote the book. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I, again, I'm I'm not saying it's bad. It's just oh, yeah, the yeah, same no, the mm -hmm. same uh, differences, if you will, uh, yeah. between those two things. Mm -hmm. That's. That's odd, especially that he wrote the book, Eric. Though mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. very strange, but it's a. I love that movie. I think it's. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I saw that back when it came out about a decade ago, it, it would have made my top ten list of the year. It was my. It was my number yeah, one yeah. of the year. It was yeah, your number yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I don't think Rachel. I don't think I knew you at that time. Did I? Or? Yes, I. I think that we knew each other because um, I went and reviewed it for Just Press Play. I think when. Oh it wow! Came out. Wow throwback uh, yeah i was gonna say that's a throwback right there um <laughs> but i got out of the screening which i only got myself i didn't get a plus one for it and i called eric and i just said we have to find out when this movie is coming out because i need to take you to see it immediately <laughs> yeah guys uh, rob have you seen the perks of being a wallflower i have not unfortunately but see it <laughs> when you get a chance please so good so good all right well, we're getting sort of off topic here but <laughs> Uh, Jen, you're obviously you're a theater person. Uh, what did you think of Dear Evan Hansen, the film? So I saw Dear Evan Hansen with Ben Platt the first year that it came out on Broadway. Cool. Um, at the time, I I really loved it. I think the music is is what makes it better than your average Broadway play. I think that's why it was well received. I guess is what I'm saying. Mm. Um, that being said, there are quite a lot of differences. I try to be open with. Um, musical to movie because I realized you can't do the same thing on those two platforms you know what I mean there's going to be changes hmm. but I mean Rachel really hit it I thought it was strange that they took out so much of the parents because I think what made the Broadway show so almost uncomfortable to watch hmm. was that there was so much about the parents and you're kind of looking at the adult side of what was going on while you were looking at the teenager side and as an, I mean, I was an adult at the time. I mean, I was young, but I was, you know, not in high school anymore when I saw it on Broadway. I, I empathize, empathize, empathize with the parents and they didn't give you that opportunity as much here. Amy Adams did a phenomenal job, but I have to say in the Broadway show, it's Evan's mom that you kind of are feeling mm. close to and feeling bad for. And in this, Julianne Moore really didn't make me feel that bad for her. Yeah. I don't know if it was her. I don't know if it was the writing, but I was kind of like, lady, you aren't even in this movie half of the time. Well, you don't even know what's going on. But in the, in the play, she was really trying to get with Evan and be like, what's happening? And even she, I mean, and I don't want to spoil the ending of the movie, but the ending was a little bit different too. In that in the play, mm -hmm. she kind of figured out all along, like something's wrong with my son. And in the movie, she was like totally blindsided. Like, how could you lie like that? But it, it just, yeah. it, was, it felt like a huge disconnect as far as that's concerned, I mean, the mothers sing a song at the beginning about how hard it is to raise their teenage sons, which was totally omitted from the movie. Mm. Um, I loved uh, Zoe. I thought she was great. I also loved, um, I liked Alana more in the movie than I did on the Broadway show. In the Broadway show, she came off, again, maybe it was the actress, but she came off like this really pretentious, mm. know-it-all, like had to be the best in her class and didn't care as long as her foundation got to the top. In the mm -hmm. movie, I kind of got the vibe that she really did want to do something nice in memory of Connor. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a nice change. I was like, oh, thank God, because in the, in the play, it kind of was like, okay, enough of this girl. I don't want to see her anymore. But mm -hmm. in the movie, I, she was made for some of the best scenes. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think a big part of that was also Amanda Stenberg being in the part that she yeah, made. Yeah, she was great. Of, That's what I'm saying. saying. I, think it was the, I think it was the actresses. They just did it differently. And mm -hmm. I happened to really like the way she did in the movie. And they also, they added because the new song was hers. And I think that's what I think helped out a lot. Mm -hmm. It was giving 
her much right. more context with giving her that song that really lays out what what her yeah. mindset is going into this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I definitely see where you're, you guys are getting at and comparing the the play to the movie. There is some disappointment there. I I I, I can sense that. <laughs> But, but normally uh, that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes I'll actually like the movie better than the musical. Like I'll be like, wow, what a great version of this. It's not the same, but I really like what they added. In this case, I almost felt like they dumbed it down so that teenagers would like it more. I mean, that's kind of what it felt like. I felt a little bit, and I, I really hate to say this. And I said this to Rob when we walked out, as much as I love the music, I almost think that without the music, it may have been a better film because I would have been seeing it as a film and not as a musical film. That is a very interesting thought. Yeah, I, I could see this as a straightforward drama. It was weird because in the in, on the Broadway play, the music is what makes it. And then in this movie, no. it was almost hindering it because you were like, what the heck is going on? And it was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I did see it. So I knew the plot line, but even Rob at one point was like, yeah, I feel like why are they belting this song out in the middle of the bedroom? <laughs> like it it's just a, felt a little awkward. It was a little off for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the soundtrack is amazing. And it's incredible. I, I mean, it just felt weird gotta, at some points in this. Gotta, you got to separate. I think you got to separate the music from the film. And I think they were both. They would work a lot better uh, artistically if they're just separated. That's <laughs> what I think too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I think that's that's an interesting idea. I guess um, I have to ask Randy since you were you're. It seems like uh, both you and Robert are probably the least familiar with the source and like for us we could see where those missing pieces were because right. we saw it in, you know either for the soundtrack or the play. so for either one of you who are not familiar with the original source material did you kind of notice that it was that the family kind of got more background compared to the more evan and the sister yeah yeah for sure i, I would have definitely loved to have seen more of the family dynamic um it just it it, it it's, I think it's just suffered from a, from the script and the adaptation, like the transfer was just not a smooth one. Mm -hmm. um, and like you guys are saying, yeah, the family, that, that dynamic needed to be emphasized more. Um, but uh, Rob, you, you're, yeah, um, what do you think? So, you know, being unfamiliar um, with the show in general, um, I thought it was interesting, um, but I did feel like something was lacking like there was tremendous potential for something great there i saw but um i felt like it was poorly executed um mm -hmm. you know like I, overall like I, I really did enjoy it you know i would certainly recommend this movie to people um mm -hmm. you know it, it has a good message um there you know to expand on what jen was saying before about uh, the music kind of getting in the way of the story opening up um like yes there was a scene when evan hansen um um i'm sorry um ben platt is with um caitlin dever um and they're, they're singing this beautiful song and it's so big and it's so powerful but the camera's right there in their faces and and it's it felt too constraining um you know it, it was almost uncomfortable like i i wanted to be able to feel it more but i, I couldn't you know with being so close to, to them the way that they were, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. um, no, it does. But yeah, there, there were some scenes like that too, you know, when um, Ben Platt is singing about his feelings, but, um, you know, um, the family that he becomes really close with is right in front of him. Um, mm. And it, it almost feels like an inquisition, like the way that it's set up on camera, um, when it would have been better if it was just like a spotlight on him and everything else was darkened out, like like it would be on stage. Uh, that's good, yeah, um, I like that. Yeah. But yes, I did feel like some characters in it were underdeveloped. Um, I was really very curious to see uh, um, Colton Ryan's character develop mm -hmm. more. I was yeah. really curious about him and his backstory, um, but... Um, Overall, he was barely in it. He was just yeah, yeah. Um, and speaking of that, I would have loved to have seen a little bit more of an emphasis on mental health issues. I mean, it's you know obviously it's touched on with with yeah. suicide here. Yeah. I felt like they did that in the musical though. That's kind of what I was saying before. I almost feel like oh, they, they changed this to be like 
one of those, you know, you see Saturday morning 90s movies where it's like the teenagers love it and they're like, oh, you, you know, and in the in the play, I feel like they really talked about Connor more and the situation more. Yeah, he was I remember kind of like feeling that. like massively uncomfortable in many parts in a good way, like uh, just like cringing a little bit in my seat, like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? And that didn't happen at all in the movie. Right. And Colton Ryan, who played uh, Connor, he was in this movie, maybe like two minutes tops. He had mm -hmm. like random, mo random scenes, random moments. And I believe he was in the original play. Um, could be wrong. That's what I wanted to say too. You just reminded me. So okay. Colton Ryan, so so Connor, okay, in the musical, and tell me if anybody else that knows the musical feels differently. In the musical, on stage, they made him seem almost, I don't want to say psychotic, but like he seemed like somebody that would be like a school shooter or had like a lot of bad problems, whatever, okay, oh. obviously he commits suicide. In the movie, when he was talking to Evan, I almost sympathized more with him. I was like, this guy is hurting and nobody's helping him. And he was actually nice to Evan in the yeah. entire musical. I mean, he was grilling him from the, the whole five minutes he was on stage. I mean, you were right. kind of like, get this jerk off the stage. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't feel bad right. for him at all. In the movie, I was kind of like, oh, my God, he's not that bad of a guy, which I thought was also a really interesting change. And it was definitely deliberate because, I yeah, the same actor was involved in both. So. And no, he was I, so good. He 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 sang. He danced in the movie. Mm -hmm. He was fantastic. I wanted to see more of him, but yeah, no. In in the in the musical, you were like, mm. "Oh my god, this guy's gonna kill somebody or himself." Like you knew that he was a problem, like right. scary serial killer vibes. But in the movie, you were right. you were like, "Oh my," you you felt really bad. I don't know yeah. why that choice was made. I'm sure it was made for several reasons, but. I, I think what I, what I can kind of say for the movie, because I, I, from everything, because again, I'm not having seen the show, kind of going off of what's in the soundtrack mm -hmm. and going off of what can be found. Um, I do get that sense that Connor is more extreme in the musical, or is this one? I think what mm -hmm. I enjoyed about that, and I think it's just more of a choice, more of an acting choice, is that you see that this is a kid who I think they wanted to make it very clear he has very low lows and very high highs. And I liked that, though. I liked that change. That was a positive change for me. And, and so with the very, very brief moments he has with Evan, you can see that that this is a kid that deep down, there is a reasonableness to it. There is a friendliness that mm -hmm. even in another possibility that they could have been friends, but the fact that he has, that there is just this te this bleakness and darkness underneath mm -hmm. him. And you see that explode out, especially like when he finds the letter, when he reads his sister, like you can see him like, literally getting triggered and like exploding at, at, at Evan. You can, so you can see why, people would be distant from him because he might be friendly, but it's the thing of you don't know what's going to set off, yeah. set him off in that right. violence and oh, that yeah. rage. Oh, and I think that was just a choice the actor made. Oh yeah, and it was a, it was a brilliant one. I'm sure he spoke to uh, Chabosky about that as well. Um, mm -hmm. but, it, but also with the, the, the Connor in the background thing, I, I think a lot of that is because with the, again, not spoiling the ending, but a great deal of, I think, for the, sh for the movie adaptation was the focus on an entire everybody making their images of Connor, but no one knowing Connor, and that's the reason why we don't. The see ending him. in the movie, I actually think, was better than. Yes. it was a little bit changed from the stage musical, but I actually think it was better. The, the, the Connor stuff, sense. I think, is better. Yeah. Yeah, okay. with with and, the movie, I don't think it would have read well at all if they used the exact same and, ending from the musical. And I think that's what emphasizes that is the fact that you have this entire movie with Evans' lies and the fact that. No, the parents, nobody knows the real mm -hmm. Connor. Like, and so it's the thing of like the, like we as the audience are like everyone else that we had this very brief glimpse of Connor and we're just having it filled in. And in the end, I appreciate the fact that we do get the sense of the realization of we do need to know the real him mm -hmm. that we've been sidestepping that this entire movie. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that. I actually, I enjoyed that part of the ending a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, Hey guys, so we're gonna go on a, a short commercial break, but before we do that, um, see it or skip it. Would you recommend this film to other people, uh, Jen? Yes, but I would also recommend you see the stage version at some point, whether it's on Broadway or just a regular community theater eventually, but compare and contrast the two and tell me what you think. <laughs> yes. uh, Rob, uh, would you so recommend see it? Yeah, see it. Definitely. Cool, cool, Rachel. I would say see it and also check out Steven Schabowski's other movies as well. Yes, for sure. 
Uh, Eric, uh, would you recommend this? Uh, I'm with Jen. I think it's a great, it's a really good adaptation, but I, and I definitely still want to see the stage show. As for me, I say see it. Uh, I definitely, I, I, just right now, I, I came to the realization that I need to see this on, on stage. Um, but guys, everyone watching at home and on your devices, if you have the chance, please, please, please see the perks of being a wallflower. It's fantastic. Also, Wonder, which is uh, also great. Um, really, uh, I love both of those films so much. And Dear Evan Hansen, it is uh, a wonderful film in its own right. Um, it's now out in theaters and will be made available on premium video on demand platforms on October 14th. So check it out there. Um, so guys, we're gonna just go on a short commercial break, but we'll be back with more film reviews right after this. Under the Radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call And we have uh, two more reviews to do. Well, you guys have one more. I have an, I have two more. Uh, and this one, it's so different from Dear Evan Hansen. It's not even funny. Um, <laughs> this is the latest uh, Clint Eastwood neo-Western. Uh, it's called Cry Macho. And it basically is a story of an older uh, former rodeo star who's basically on a, a quest for redemption. He's leading a very quiet life uh, when his uh, friend slash colleague boss um, basically gives him a mission to find his long lost son uh, and bring him back to Texas from Mexico. And along the way, he encounters some, uh, some problems. Uh, so Dwight Yoakam plays his, his boss uh, who wants his kid back and basically his ex-wife is involved with like criminals and you know uh, along the way Clint Eastwood actually makes a, a romantic connection with a local lady in a Spanish uh, uh, Mexican town and it's basically a story about uh, friendship and bonding and just you know starting over uh, is really the main theme here and I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not the biggest Clint Eastwood aficionado. I mean, I've seen a few of his movies. I love uh, In the Line of Fire. I thought that was great. Uh, his Dirty Harry movies are fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's he's 91 years old now and he's, he's still acting. He's still directing. It's, it's great. Uh, this movie actually is directed very well. And it is adapted from a book by N. Richard Nash. And for decades, they've been trying to make this movie. Uh, in 2013, Arnold Schwarzenegger was approached. Uh, they were very close to having made that film with Schwarzenegger in the lead role, uh, which would, would have been kind of interesting. <laughs> I don't know how- I like oh, just well. imagining that. Like that's- so really <laughs> Come on, we have to get out of here. We have to go back to Texas. Get <laughs> that would have been an insane movie. I, I would have loved to have seen that. Uh, and it's funny too, because um, Schwarzenegger has has uh, listed Eastwood as like one of his uh, mentor, like his, his inspirations, hmm. his action hero inspirations. Um, so yeah, Cry Macho. Um, you know, it was okay. It, it wasn't stellar. Not a lot really goes on in it. Uh, but, you know, Eastwood has some good, you know, he has some pretty good lines and the relationship between him and the boy is, is pretty good. 
uh, it's a nice friendship, kind of a Batman and Robin type of deal. Um, but yeah, guys, Cry Macho, uh, what did you, th- what did you think, Rob? I honestly loved this movie. Um, you know, um, the foundation, I mean, the cinematography was really gorgeous. Um, there were many shots where you could just look and appreciate what was around the characters. Um, them just moving through the spaces was gorgeous. The lighting, um, you know, it's, it's very much about nature, um, you know, and just kind of moving through that space. And um, I guess also maybe how it can be transformative, um, you know, taking a journey. Um, but I really appreciated the characters in the movie. I mean, yes, like not a lot was going on, but um, it was really charming. Like it, I was laughing like a lot and everything like that. Like I, you know, it was just a fun movie just about like human beings. Like, <laughs> I think but, Rob, I think this is another movie for you and your grandfather to watch. <laughs> we, we actually did watch it together. We watched oh, it with him. <laughs> we watched that Red, one with him, we yeah. We actually said, he's like, oh, Tell, tell that guy, thank you, you know, that you do the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're that, welcome. Yeah, plus, did you watch City Sicklers before or after Cry Macho? Oh, uh, he, he, yeah, he, he loved Cry Macho. So he said, you know, thank, thank uh, you know, your friend Randy you know, for turning us on to this movie. <laughs> so, Happy to help. <laughs> um, Rachel, what did you think of the film? <laughs> oh, uh, we're going to be getting two sides Uh-oh. of the coin here. And <laughs> I'm just going to say this. It's, I'm very happy if, if people enjoyed this movie. I'm very happy if people got the, something out of this movie. Uh, I, was, I don't think I was the target audience for this. I did not enjoy it. Okay. Um, and I think that a lot of choices that Clint Eastwood usually makes creatively um were a big hurdle for me he likes to do things in one take he likes to do things like Mm. where it's like the the actors will be rehearsing and they'll actually just be filming it and it's like oh yeah we got the take and it's like oh I thought we were just rehearsing we're not going to do it again um (laughs) I which I'm sometimes it works million dollar baby just Mm -hmm. still an incredible movie um Mm -hmm. but for me uh I just kind of walked away from this movie going, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. I, I don't think I was necessarily the target audience. It's, it's a big eh for Rachel. I, I get it. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Eric, what, what do you think? I'm kind of in the same camp. Uh, I was much colder on this one. Um, I do agree with the cinematography. I do agree. It's very well directed. My, my, and it weirdly feels like a spiritual successor to Gran Torino. I, I thought the I, same thing. Yes. He so said that to me when we were watching it. He was like, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of Gran Torino. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and the thing is, it's like, and Gran Torino is not perfect, but I really do enjoy Gran Torino. And I just, I think the problem was when kind of thinking of why that worked versus Cry Macho didn't, is I think it's just, I didn't get into the relationship. The, the main crux of it is the relationship between Eastwood and, and the kid and and which in both in both movies and considering that it is about both movies are a crotchety old man and a little kid having to get along and um i didn't enjoy, I, I guess i just did, i just never got into it as much in cry macho as i did in gran torino mm-hmm. and um and so for that it just it's it's if you, if you can't get into that you can't really that's that's what the heart of this movie mm-hmm. is and so yeah. if you can't get into that it's it's not it's, and so I was just kind of always getting jarred out. It just it just never clicked with me, and I think that's why I'm I'm on the colder side with Cry Macho. Yeah, there's like there's like there's there's two camps. You either like it a lot, like Rob and I are do, and um, or you just really don't like it, and it's not your cup of tea. There's like it doesn't seem like there's a like uh, you meet in the middle, like you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jen, maybe you, you're in the middle. Maybe. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so full disclosure, like sometimes you'll recommend movies and I get like scared because I am like <laughs> very, like I don't do a lot of, um, I don't like blood or gore or anything like that. Like it's just not my thing. But I, I find that movies do that, not even just horror movies, just like just to like throw something in there. So when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, here we go. Like this is going to be one of those things that I just like, I'm like looking down because I just don't want to, I can't handle it. Mm-hmm. um 
I was pleasantly surprised. I wouldn't say this was like the greatest film I've ever seen or anything, but as I was watching it, I was like, oh, I don't hate this as much as I thought I was going to. So maybe because I set my bar like really, really low. I do like Clint Eastwood. Everything I've seen him in, I've always liked him. And I also think it's cool that he, you know, directs and acts and produces. So like he has his hands in everything, which I, you can see. And I think that's a nice touch mm-hmm. because when somebody's involved with it through the whole thing, it kind of adds another layer to it. It's a really good point. Okay. I do like that. Um, hmm. I agree that I could see why some plot points you were just kind of like, all right, is there more, is there more to this, you know, mm-hmm. but I did enjoy the, the kind of just moving through the journey, mm-hmm. like without an actual point to every single thing that they did, that makes any sense at all. Like I did kind of like just them hanging out and like, Oh, our car's getting stolen for no apparent reason at all. Like somebody's just <laughs> doing that. I did. I did like that kind of thing. Cause it felt more real. It didn't feel like they're in an action movie and every single moment has to count towards something. Right. Um, I also, I, I really liked, um, I don't remember his name, the kid's name, the actor. I really liked him a lot. I thought he was um, genuine. Eduardo he reminded me. Minette. What's his Eduardo name? Minette. Yeah. Eduardo. I don't know if he's been in anything else, but he portrayed this character pretty realistically to a lot of 13, 14 year old <laughs> boys that I've seen that are like kind of getting into trouble, but you can still see that they're a good kid somewhere yeah. in there. You know what I mean? I thought he, I thought, his performance was the most genuine out of everybody's in the entire thing. Okay, cool. So you're kind of in the middle, it seems. I am. I mean, <laughs> I like to compare it to a lot of movies that I've seen in this genre, but this genre is not my style normally. Right. Um, but I did like it for that genre compared to a lot of the other things like Hero and Handsome. That's more of my style, you know. Cool. When we were gearing up to see it, um, <laughs> I, we were toying with the idea of seeing it in the theater, perhaps if we had time. Nice. And, Jen said to me, she's like, you know, like, I think we should see this at home just because if it does get heavy, like, you know, I can walk out of the room and, and just um, take a minute. So. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I, 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 I don't like movies. Like, I understand why people do, but I can't watch stuff like that because I don't want to watch movies or TV to be stressed out. Right. Like, I like things that make me not stressed. So when I see things like this and I'm like, oh, they're going to Mexico, they're smuggling somebody out of there. I'm like, I, I can just turn on the news and probably see that. So like. <laughs> I don't I want to watch it in a film, you know, but this was nice. This was like a nice level of a little bit of action, but also yeah. like a nice storyline. So it makes me wonder if the Arnold version would have been more what you were expecting. <laughs> no, yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so guys, I just want to mention, um, according to Samba TV, which measures its results from 3 million households and only counts a view if the film was watched for at least five minutes. Cry Macho was streamed on HBO Max in 693,000 households in its first three days, tying with uh, In the Heights. Wow. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's pretty impressive, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, that did really well. I mean, it's also really impressive that Clint Eastwood, at turning 92, is still doing... I mean, he, he didn't even seem like he was 92 and barely yeah. able to do anything. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I know he's older, but I mean... He, if I were watching this not knowing him, I'd be like, oh, here's a guy in his 70s. Like, I couldn't believe he was, like, getting on horses, driving the car. I'm like, okay. No, he's, he's still clear? got it. And, you know, <laughs> it, it's really nice to see him still working, of course. And mm-hmm. he, obviously over the, what, what, 50 years, he's been he, a Hollywood legend, um, both yeah. behind the camera, in front of the camera. And um, this is further proof of that. So he's, he's definitely a legend. So it's really awesome to see him still working. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, guys. So see it or skip it, Rob. See <laughs> it. Yes, yes. Uh, Rachel. Uh, I gotta. I gotta say for myself, skip it. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Jen. <laughs> um, I'd say see it. I don't need to see it twenty times, but you know, yeah. if you like Clint Eastwood, you should see it. Definitely. And Eric. <laughs> uh, I'm skipping it, but I'm probably gonna go rewatch Gran Torino. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to revisit a, a bunch of the movies he's directed and that he's starred in as well. So that's going to be a, a lengthy project. <laughs> I I really want to watch Unforgiven because I have never mm. seen Unforgiven and so I good. just heard how I spectacular it is. No, no, we're going to watch it's, all it's very, of the man with good. no name. <laughs> <laughs> 
So guys, I just want to talk uh, briefly about a film that sadly you guys did not see, um, but it's called His Master's Voice. And it is a science fiction film from Hungary. Basically, this is part of a series on um, the uh, platform MUBI, which is celebrating uh, Polish science fiction author Stanislaw Lem. And we reviewed a film that was adapted uh, from his work uh, called The Congress, which was very strange, very trippy, uh, starring Robin Wright. That was great. But One his... question for you. Yes, yes. As you, as you talk about this, yes. is it based on the dog statue? Dogs, I'm, mm, I don't think so. Um, okay, because no, because, okay, so I'm Hungarian and okay. my, in my grandparents' house, in my dad's old bedroom, there's, we have, the, it's a mirror with a dog looking into a yeah. thing and it's called his master's voice. And my dad oh. has that now. Um, and I'm, oh. I was just, when you said that, I was like, wait a minute. I, I know that like in my mind from my childhood, that mirror has been there for like. No, I don't, it, this is a science fiction movie about a guy who's looking for his long lost father who's involved in some Which is kind weird. Of, Cause you said it was Hungarian too, which is yeah. you know, Odo is and my cool. family. So. I don't know. There were no dogs in this movie, no mirrors, but. Um, yeah, that's maybe it's a weird coincidence, but we'll have that's to research that strange. later. That is weird. Anyway, it, it, this movie is strange. Um, it is a science fiction film. He's looking for his long lost dad and he meets him. And it's very weird because the father is um, basically suspected of being involved in some kind of conspiracy. Um, I saw it because I, I thought the Congress was great. And I thought that the uh, that level of genius would transfer over to this movie. It didn't really, um, because this movie didn't grab me, but um, I do recommend um, checking out uh, MUBI. It's M-U-B-I, and they've got a wonderful selection of foreign films and other and, uh, narrative features. Uh, so you could check those out. Um, okay guys, so uh, next up, I wanted to just do coming attractions real quick. Basically, the, this week uh, that this is going to be airing, uh, we've got the long-awaited James Bond film, No Time to Die. Uh, it's uh, Daniel Craig's last outing as 007, and uh, after 15 years, I think he's, he's left an a, a mar indelible mark. Uh, yeah, and yeah, he's a, great, he's a great Bond. So we're going to be reviewing that soon. Uh, we've also got a film called Lamb. Uh, it's a drama horror mystery, so that uh, has been some potential there. Mm -hmm. Also, we've got a, oh, Rachel and Eric, you might like this, South of Heaven. Uh, it's an action crime drama starring Jason Sudeikis, uh, mm -hmm. also Evangeline Lilly, so it's a pretty good cast right there. Mm -hmm. um, South of Heaven, so we'll see about reviewing that in the future. Uh, next up on the list, we've got Mass, which is a drama. And basically two couples meet for a painful and raw conversation in the aftermath of a violent tragedy. Sounds like a feel good. So uh, that's mass. Uh, and we've got survive the game, which is, seems like a standard action thriller. It's got Bruce Willis and Chad Michael Murray. I don't know why Bruce Willis keeps making these movies, but um, <laughs> it, he can do whatever he wants, but I don't think we'll ever have another uh, fifth element or uh, die hard, so. <laughs> um, and lastly, guys, uh, this one seems kind of interesting. It's called The Rescue, and it's a docudrama, uh, which follows the story of the Wild Boars youth soccer team who got trapped and their dramatic uh, 2018 rescue. Oh, I remember so, that. Yeah. That was when they are in the cave, right? Yeah. yeah. Cave rescue. Yeah, so, I remember that too. So that looks really interesting, actually. Um, and also, guys, I just want to mention uh, this week we've got uh, coming up uh, New York Comic Con, October 7th through the 10th. Um, you know, we obviously had uh, a bit of a hiatus, a pause last year. So we didn't get to go to the Javits Center um, that, you know, last year, which was very uh, sad because I, I, this is my home away from home. I love New York Comic Con and I've got my tickets. Uh, I'm going to be helping out with uh, the New York City Ghostbusters, we have a booth. We're gonna be doing the slime lab for kids, make nice. some slime, take it home with you, um, pose for pictures, have a lot of fun. And basically all the, um, the donations and proceeds will go towards uh, the uh, Trinity Place Shelter, 
which um, it is a shelter for LG, um, LGBTQ uh, youths. So uh, I apologize for butchering that, but um, it's a great cause. It's a great, uh, it's a great uh, organization. So yeah, check that out guys, if you can, if you have the time, uh, Trinity Place Shelter. And we will be at New York uh, City Comic, New York Comic Con uh, this week going to have a lot of fun you know uh, everything's going to be safe obviously so uh, if you're uh, in Manhattan during this time uh, we'd love to see you stop by the New York City Ghostbusters booth all right guys so um we have a few minutes left I just wanted to go around and do some plugs uh what's going on in your lives what are you what projects are you working on that you can talk of that you can speak about uh jen i know you always have something cooking um well as always you can follow me on instagram uh jen j-e-n-n dot c-o-v-e i post all my casting calls there i'm currently casting a couple of uh projects some films some tv stuff i'm also directing two things right now yes. uh annie is one of them which will be in uh, December, and I'm going to actually be singing at a uh, Broadway fundraiser on November 13th. I can get you the um, ticket link, Randy, if you want it, to share it with people. Um, Carrie Butler will be there from Broadway. Um, a couple other Broadway people will be there. We're singing, all the money's going for charity. Um, also, I'm still writing my book. It should be coming out probably next year, I think. Um, it's almost done. We're going to get it published pretty soon. And that's pretty much it, I think, <laughs> for right now that I can speak about. So. <laughs> no, that's I'm I'm out of breath. That was a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> um, Mr. Harris, anything you want to discuss? <laughs> yeah, um, I just have to mention. I don't know if you guys have heard, but um, another artist who's you know both in front of and behind the camera, Sylvester Stallone. I believe his pandemic project was creating a director's cut edition of Rocky IV. And apparently it has a release date of November 27th to celebrate the film's 35th anniversary. So I'm very hmm. excited for that. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> uh, Rachel, what do you got? <laughs> okay, so um, I recently accepted a position as assistant pastry chef at the Law of Donut Engineering, also known as the Lodge in Jersey City. Um, they have, uh, they've been named uh, Best Donuts in Hudson County, which includes the Jersey City and Hoboken area. So we're very excited about that. Um, so you can stop by and have some delicious donuts. Um, also, you can find uh, my podcast, Faith Healing. Uh, the first three episodes are out. Um, <clears throat> I talk about everything from prosperity gospel to uh, animal ethics and how that ties into faith. Uh, that episode's really fun. We talk about our favorite animals, which, <laughs> and, uh, and some of our favorite, uh, like unlikely animal friendships and things like that. <laughs> um, so definitely check it out. It's on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere you can find podcasts. So Rachel, if, if I walked into that, that store, what would you recommend for just a casual donut guy? Ooh. <laughs> Okay, there's a couple that I would recommend off the bat. If you want something sweet and tart, I would recommend the Lulu's Lemonade Stand, which is a lemon meringue. Um, our other pastry chef, Lulu, actually developed this. It's named for her. Um, it has lemon curd on the inside. It's a filled donut, lemon mm. curd on the inside, and then it has piped meringue that's then toasted on top. Um, and as far as uh, savory, we do have a chicken and waffles uh, donut hole. Uh, which is a maple dough that has fried chicken on the inside and it's fried up and then it's tossed in a maple glaze. Oh, You've that's, seen that's waitress a meal right there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Have you seen wait have you seen waitress? Yes. The musical? I have. Yeah. They have like Lulu's pie or something. Exactly yes. I, exactly I told like, her that the first like, day. She has never seen she has never seen a waitress. And well, you uh, should watch yeah. the movie or the musical because you were describing the entire show pretty much. So. Yeah, the musical is fantastic. Yeah, really oh good. my yeah. god. That chicken donut thing sounds <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That sounds great. Um 
And last but not least, Eric uh, Godfrey, what, do you have anything going on? What's going no, on? I'm, I'm the boring one. I'm just gonna. Be, <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna be that annoying friend who won't stop talking about Ted Lasso until everyone gets. <laughs> That's cool. I've heard a lot of good things about it, so maybe that'll be my next thing I start. If yeah. you're into some, if, considering what you were talking about, yes, I think Ted Lasso is perfect for what you're looking for. Yeah, good. I definitely have to continue watching. I think I'm just two episodes in. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tonight. This is amazing. It's great to see you guys again. Jen and, and Rob, it's been a while. So, yeah, and Eric and, uh, yeah, Rachel, I, I, I saw you at the Dear Evan Hansen screening. So that was awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, thank you so much. And I just want to tell uh, our viewers uh, that you can watch uh, brand new episodes of Under the Radar every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Uh, you could also check out the show. You can watch the show on cable TV channels, Fios 34, RCN 83, and Spectrum 56 and 1996. And of course, you can uh, you know, check out the uh, Unger the Radar YouTube channel, subscribe and share, spread the word, spread the love. And uh, yeah, I want to thank everyone watching. I'm Randy Unger. This has been Unger the Radar. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much, guys.